Hey tubers and welcome back to another video. This one focusing on setting up a testing track at your workbench. So we have uh, quite a few of these here in the shop set up. Um, so that way we can program, test, and uh, calibrate our locomotives for the guys that are uh, doing the installations. Uh, this particular workstation features going from right to left at the top of your picture are PC, this one is a uh, tablet, the uh, one of the Microsoft tablets. And then we have the uh, NCE power cab. And then over here to the far top left, we have the ESU programmer, and that's hooked up to a decoder tester. So in this particular setup, what we're trying to do is if we have a raw decoder, we stick it on the ESU tester, and from there we can either test, program, load files. This device right here, the power cab, is what we use when a locomotive is on the track to extract information and also program. The PC right here is what we use for running JMRI. So JMRI uh, has a piece of software called Decoder Pro, which is recognized by the NCE system as just another throttle but when you are running Decoder Pro rather than pushing buttons on a physical throttle you are using checkboxes and sliders to make your changes to the locomotive in real time what we call programming on the main or you can also do service programming as well where you can extract information out of the decoder. Now the connection between your PC in this case is made via USB to this device down here and this is the NCE USB interface. So as you can see the USB cable from the tablet makes its connection into the NCE USB interface and then on this output on the board that goes directly into the power cab panel what we call the PCP. This cable right here is what the power cab is connected to in order to energize provide power through the PCP up to the track. So taking a little bit of a closer look at the relationship between a power cab and the output of the PCP, the power cab panel. So this device right here, the power cab panel, has an output to track power. So in this case, the output of track power going from the PCP goes to the input side of the PSX. Now remember on the PSX that this whole terminal is what we call a pass-through. So pins 4 and 3 provide power to the board and then pins 2 and 1 again on the inputs on the input side provide pass-through power or daisy chaining to another PSX further down the line. This side over here is the output which sends power directly to the track or to your particular zone. Now the beautiful thing about the PSX is that you can have you can configure it to work with not only really large power type systems for G scale but you can also have it function along with low power systems like the power cab so the power cab puts out about a nominal 1.3 amps it's rated higher however the supplied power supply with a power cab is only rated at about 1.3 1.4 amps so that's about the maximum power that can be supplied to the rail. In real terms, that means in HO scale, you'll be able to run maybe three to four sound locomotives. Maybe. Usually about two or three is what we find work optimally. In N scale, it might be three or four, maybe as many as five locomotives running. So again, we're looking at the PSX over here on the left, and then the power cab panel over here on the right. Now this red light on the power cab panel 
indicates that the DCC booster is functioning. When I short out the track, the PSX automatically shuts down, but the power cab still has power. Alright, so that means power is still available from the power cab to another zone. So we like to use the analogy of power going into your house. Think of it like this. You have your transformer, the power cab, providing power coming into your house. The circuit breaker is similar to a distribution breaker box in your house. Power comes in and then each individual circuit breaker will control a room in your house. Think of a circuit breaker like the PSX as being able to provide power to individual zones on your railroad. We'll just use a simple circle of track with two tracks and you divide the layout in half you could have four zones. If you take a circle divide it by two you've got two zones. So what's happening in one area of the layout doesn't affect the other just like in your house. Alright guys, so again, in review, starting at the upper left, we have an ESU programmer which we use in order to load sound files onto ESU decoders. We also can substitute the QSI programmer for working with QSI decoders. This particular device right here is the ESU decoder tester, so you can attach a decoder directly to this either via 8 pin wiring harness, 16, next 18, and 21 pin. And then there's also a speaker and motor mounted on the board. Here we have the power cab. This is the device right here, which is booster, DCC command station, as well as a throttle. So it does everything right in the palm of your hand. The tablet PC is where we run JMR, JMRI Decoder Pro, which then interfaces with this NCE USB printed circuit board, otherwise known as a P PCB. And then that's via a cable into the NCE power cab panel here. The power cab panel on the back side of it has power out going to the track which first goes into the PSX circuit breaker, through the circuit breaker, and then finally out and up to the track. All right, guys. Hope we shed some light on a little bit of the mysteries of the power cab, JMRI, and how we use it here in the shop. If you got any questions, check us out over at Tony'sTrains.com. Send us an email, info at Tony'sTrains.com. Or give us a call, 800-978-3472. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll be back soon with more stuff. Thanks for watching. Later, guys.